Hi, everybody. This is a podcast, everything about hockey. If you don't like hockey, you won't like this podcast. Today's topic is the NHL Amateur Draft. The 2023 National Hockey League Amateur Draft is in Nashville, Tennessee on July the 28th and 29th. The 28th will be the first round and the 29th will be two through seven. Let's look at the uh, the talent of the teams. First off, Connor Bedard headlines the talented group of prospects waiting to hear their name called in the 2023 NHL Amateur Draft. The player breakdown of the draft is Connor Bedard sets the top of the mountain. Adam Fatilli and Carlson are their own tier, just talented just below Connor Bedard because of their size and strength and athletic ability. Separate them from the otherwise average to below average size skilled forward. This year's draft is going to be a little bit different than last year's draft. Because this year's draft, they're going to have a low number of high-end skilled defensemen available. Unlike the 2022 draft, which had five of the first 12 players selected, were highly skilled defensive draft picks. Goaltending is always interesting in drafts. Taking a goaltender in the first round is always risky, but it could be even more dangerous this year considering the depth of high-skilled forwards they have available. So now let's look at how I'm going to do this evaluation. I'm going to evaluate the top 16 draft teams, the franchise's top three prospects, and the under-21 players that played in last year's NHL season. Then I'm going to predict which player should best suit that team's uh, pick in this year's NHL amateur draft. Then I'm also going to tell you in the top three prospects which one I consider is a blue chip prospect. The first pick will go to the Chicago Blackhawks, which won the draft lottery and got to move up two spots from a third spot to the first overall spot in this year's NHL draft. Right now they have under 21. They have nobody under 21 that actually was playing last year on the roster. But they do have a nice blue chip prospect called Lucas Reichel. He's six foot, 170 pounds. He was drafted by Chicago in 2020. In the first round, 17th overall, he's a talented sniper. The other forward is Frank Nazar. He's a 5'9", 175-pound. He was drafted by Chicago in 2022. He was a 13th overall pick. He plays for the University of Michigan right now. He's a speedy, small forward with a good shot. And their best prospect, in my personal opinion, is Kevin Korinsky. He's a 6-foot, 185-pound Mobile, talented offensive defenseman. He was drafted by Chicago in 2022, seventh overall. They don't have a real lot of depth on this team, and nobody under 21. So they're starved for real talent. So obviously, the first pick in the 2023 amateur draft is Connor Medard, center, WHA. He's 5'9", 180 pounds. He played for the Regina Pats of the Western Hockey League. In Central Scouting North American rankings, he was first overall in the ranking. Games played, 57. Goals, 71. Assists, 72. Points, 143. Unbelievable. Um, now, I don't think he's going to get these numbers in the NHL, especially with the going into Chicago. Chicago really doesn't have a whole lot of real pure talent. Really, the only stud all-star they have right now under contract is Seth Jones. He's a legitimate number one defenseman. But all the forwards are middle six to lower six forwards right now. They do have a lot of cap space, so they can't add some cap if they want to do a retool instead of a rebuild, which I recommend them doing a rebuild, especially when you have a talented generational player like Conor Bedard moving into your rough franchise. But, yeah, he's he, and he's also not going to be able to do the stuff he did in the WHL. They didn't do in the NHL. He can't split through defensemen and do a little twisted wrister, top shelf where mom hides the cookies on a regular basis like he did in major juniors. He's going to have to learn how to play in the NHL, which is going to take him a little bit of a curve. I think the big factor is how much he's going to get hurt learning this uh, how to play in the NHL. I think he's going to be in like the same 
process as Jack Hughes was when he first became in the NHL. He got banged up a little bit before he learned how to actually play in the NHL. And now he's a 100-point guy at center. They both have a similar weight. Jack Hughes is actually 5'10", 170s he plays at. And Connor Bedard is going to be 5'9", 180. So Bedard has a little bit more weight, a little bit more height on him. But they got the same type of body uh, structure. So let's now look at the second pick in the NHL draft, which belongs to the Anaheim Ducks. Ducks had uh, two players under 21 playing in the NHL this year. Trevor Zegers, he had played 81 games. He had 23 goals, 42 assists for 65 points. And then Mason Metavix, he got 80, he played 80 games. <laughs> he got 17 goals, 26 assists for 43 points. So they have two very talented young forwards, under 21, already playing last year in the NHL. Now let's look at the prospects. They have, uh, I think, a blue chip prospect. Now, I really like this guy, Nathan Gaucher. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. I think he's a blue chipper. He was drafted by Anaheim in 2022, first round, 22nd overall. He's a big two-way center iceman they've already got. With already what they got in the NHL already, adding him really gives them some great offensive depth. They also have a really highly talented Defenseman they drafted uh, in 2022, 10th overall pick, Pavel Michitov. He's a talented uh, all-around defenseman they got. He's 6'1", 192 pounds. They also have Ilya Zoricker. He's a 5'9", 175-pound Anaheim draft pick. He was drafted in 2021 in the second round, 24th overall. So they have actually have a really... A really good set of offensive uh, fours already set. They could use another defenseman, but unfortunately, like I said early on in the show, there isn't a whole lot of defensemen available. And the second overall pick, you got a chance to getting a guy, Adam Fentilli, a center from the University of Michigan. He's 6'3", 190 pounds. In Central Scouting, North American, he was ranked second overall. He played... 36 games, he got 30 points, 35 assists for 65 points total. He also won the the Hobie Baker Award, which is if, if, if that's a college version of the NCAA football's Heisman Trophy. Hobie Baker in college is like the Heisman Trophy. For anybody that doesn't really know that trophy, he's willing to play a physical, hard-fought game. His game has a little bit of a bite, a little bit of an edge to it. Because he does like the physical play. He can score and make plays along the half boards. And also on the power play, he can play in front of the net. He can play at the point. And he's got a really good, accurate shot for a real good threat in either location. He's an all-around first-line center iceman. Scott's comparing him to Jack Eichel, the center for the uh, Vegas hockey team. So now let's look at the third overall pick in the NHL draft, which goes to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Now, Columbus has done a really good job of uh, rebuilding, too, and that's because of uh, Yarmir Kekalina, the GM, and John Davis, the head of uh, hockey operations, actually president of hockey operations, have done a really great job of rebuilding the uh, Blue Jacket. Last year, they had two players that were under the age of 21 that played in the NHL. First player was Cole Sillinger. He was a center. He is a center. He played uh, 64 games, got three goals, eight assists for 11 points, a high-end all-around center iceman. Then he also had a talented, versatile top six forward that played, Kent Johnson. He also played for the University of Michigan. He, had, uh, he played 79 games. He had 16 goals, 24 assists for 40 points. So they have two uh, solid uh, forwards that are under 21 that did play in the league last year. Now let's look at the top three prospects for the Blue Jackets. The first one I'm going to focus on, I think he's a blue chipper, no doubt. David Juracek, he's 6'3", 190-pound defenseman. He played in the AHL. He was the actually, made actually history in the AHL. He's the first time an 18-year-old that played in the AHL was selected to the AHL All-Star Game, which AHL, if you're not familiar with, is American Hockey League. 
which is the AAA league of the National Hockey League. He was drafted by Columbus in 2022, sixth overall. He's a top-level franchise defenseman. They also got Corson Kuhleman. He's 6'2", 200-pound defenseman. He played for the University of Wisconsin last year. This year, I kind of expect him to be in Cleveland in the American Hockey League. Columbus drafted him in 2021, first round, 25th overall. He's a quality all-around defenseman. The other defenseman I want to talk about in the center system is Stanislaus Svozel. He's six foot, 180 pounds. Columbus drafted him in 2021, third, o- third round, 69th overall. He's a mobile, skilled offensive defenseman. He also, he was the one that was actually tiered with uh, David Juracek for the uh, Czech hockey team in the uh, under-20 tournament. And he, I think he really did an unbelievable job at that tournament. So, you know, Columbus has got some really stud defensive defensemen in their system. And they got a couple young offensive defensemen. So uh, let's see who they I think they're going to pick in the first round, third overall. Okay, I think they're going to pick Leo Carlson. He played in the uh, the Sweden Elite League, the SHL. He's 6'3", 195 pounds. In central scouting, he was ranked for European or international. First overall, games played 44, goals 10, assists 15, points 25. But what makes him great is his, his passing ability. He's a pass-first center iceman. He can play wing if you want to. If you want him to, he can be a power forward for you at 6'3", you know, 200 pounds. But Columbus, I could see them putting him in center because they desperately need a first-line center iceman. And this guy, he's got a real good passing capability. He can do a good saucer pass right across the ice, good quality you know, for a teammate to make a good scoring chance. And he's also solid on the face-offs. His size allows him to play physical, protect the puck when needed, but he's not a overly physical guy. And since he's a pass-off first guy, you're not going to get a whole lot of scoring off this guy. But he's ideal for, for, uh, for a setup guy. He's kind of a Nicholas Backstrom type of a forward. They've already got Kirill Machinko which I think is like an Ovi type of a forward. So I think Marchenko and Carlson could be, hopefully, the Columbus version of Backstrom and Ovechkin in the future. That's what I'm hoping the fifth liners get to actually witness with this pick. You remember Kirill Machenko in Columbus with this 59 games, he got 21 goals, four assists for 25 points. And then Cleveland, he played last year, he got 16 games in. He got eight goals for 11 assists for 19 points. And he was playing a small amount of time as first-line winger and first-line power play. So you get Carlson and him together, Machinkoff, that would be really interesting to see. Okay, let's do a recap. Chicago, first overall pick, Connor Medard. Second overall pick, Anaheim, Adam Fintilli. And the third overall pick, Columbus, Leo Carlson. So now let's look at the fourth pick. The fourth pick is going to the San Jose Sharks. Let's look at their under-21 players, the players they had played in the NHL this year that were under 20 and years of age. Now the first one is William Eklund. I, I happen to like this guy. He only scored, He only played in two games. He only scored one goal and three assists. But I do think he's going to be a top-line franchise forward for him down the road. The next person I like to look at, the other guy I like is Thomas Bordelo. I think him too makes uh, Sharks have a really bright future up front in the top six. Bordelo, he's he only played eight games this year. He got zero goals, two assists for two points. But both of them are unbelievably talented. Bordelo is a talented playmaking center iceman. And the prospect I'm going to focus on this year is... He's a Swiss hockey player. He was drafted in the uh, first round, 27th overall. Philip Bistead. He's 6'2", 187 pounds. He's a big, strong, scoring center iceman. So they got some really good offensive up front possibilities there. Now the reason why I'm going to pick this person 
as their fourth overall pick is because the Sharks right now are on a downward spiral and they really need a lot of offense right off the bat. They can't wait for a possibly a much better prospect down the road. So I'm going to go with Will Smith, center, USA, under 18 development program. He's going to be, he should be giving him actual points in the next two or three years. He's six foot, 180 pounds. In the Central Scouting North America, he was ranked third last year in the national, under 18 national program. He played 52 games. He got 42 goals, 62 assists for 104 points. He has, he has NHL level stick handling capabilities. He does a great job of shifting his body to create space for himself. And he's had success in the international level. The under-18 tournament, he won gold medal. And him and Conor Medard had a tournament league-leading 20 points. So he was right there with Conor Medard when it comes to uh, producing points. He is definitely a potential top six forward. It's just his size and his weight keeps him in the fourth spot. You know, and Greer, the new GM, he has to have some really good quick offense because that team's attendance is starting to drop. The Shark Tank attendance last year was only 13,000. So they need a really good upward pace here pretty quickly. And I think he would give them that upper pace. Now I'm going to go to the team that has the fifth pick in the interlevel draft, and that belongs to the Montreal Canadiens. Now let's look at their under-21 players. The players that are under-21 that actually played in the NHL this last year. First one is going to be Yuri Slavkovsky. He played 39 games at four goals, 6-6 six, six for 10 points. He got hurt early on in the season, but he's a top-level franchise forward. You remember, he was the pick. He was the first overall pick. Everybody last year thought they were going to pick Shane Wright. Instead, they picked they picked Slavkovsky. Remember, that was one of the situation where Shane Wright and the fourth overall pick, when Seattle did pick him, he gave uh, the Montreal Canadiens the evil eye as he was going to the, uh, the front stage to take his uh, spot on the front stage to get announced and uh, get his picture taken with the uh, Seattle front office. Now, let's look at the next one. Let's look at the prospects. Philip Machar, he's a left winger. 5'9", 176 pounds, drafted by Montreal in the first round, 26 overall. He's a smallish, speedy forward. He has really great uh, stick handling capabilities. He's a potential uh, blue chipper. The next one is Owen Bick. I, I, I happen to like this guy, too. I, I was kind of impressed with him when he was drafted. I was actually surprised he was actually late in the second round. I thought he had a, uh, a lot more potential than this. But Montreal drafted him in the second round, 33 overall. He's a solid all-around forward. Normally, second rounders normally don't get a lot of uh, hype, a lot of uh, airtime. But Lane Hudson, a 5'8", 150-pound uh, defenseman, Montreal drafted in 2022, second round, 60 two over overall is actually pretty impressive. He was actually the captain of the Northeastern hockey team and he has solid footwork and uh, good puck handling skills for a defenseman. He's a little light, so I'm not too sure exactly how well he's going to fit in the NHL, but he's doing a really solid job in college. The person I think Montreal should pick is Kobe Barlow. He plays for the OHL Owen Sound attack. He's 6'1", 190 pounds. Central Scouting's got him ranked 12th in North America. He played uh, 59 games. He got 46 goals. He got 33 assists for a total of 79 points. I can tell by the way he reads the plays. He's got a really high hockey IQ. And he's got a really lot of energy. He's always the first player in the attack, it seems like. He always can find the back of the net. He's definitely a potential top six forward. And he's a safe pick at number five. 
Now let's look at number six. Who is uh who's got the number six pick? And that's the Arizona Coyotes. First look at the uh under twenty one players. The players that are under twenty one years old playing for the Arizona Coyotes. Dylan Guther is the uh person I'm focused on. He's a left winger. He played thirty three games. He got six goals, nine assists for fifteen points. He's got uh definitely top six four potential on this guy. Now let's look at the prospects. The prospects. Logan Cooley, center, 5'10", 170 pounds. He's definitely a franchise a forward for this team. He was drafted in the first round, third overall, and 22nd draft. He's a talented, creative offensive forward. He played for Minnesota, University of Minnesota in the Big Ten. and He averaged over a point, point a game. And a high-powered Minnesota offense, he was a major part of that offense. So he's a legitimate uh, top six forward for him. The next one we're going to look at, now let's look at Connor Geeky. He's 6'3", 193 pounds. He was drafted 11th overall in the first round of the 22nd draft. He's a big, talented center Iceman. The only thing about him, though, is I don't like to be critical, but I've watched him several times, and his skating's kind of choppy. They need to work on his skating if he's really going to make an impact in the NHL. Their top defensive prospect is Mavel Kemalu. He's a 6'6", 200-pound defenseman. He was drafted uh, the first round, 29th overall in 2022. He's a big defenseman, 6'6", 200 pounds. When this guy develops, he's going to be a stud defenseman. Now let's look at the draft pick for this team. Now this is the guy a few years ago was ranked uh, first overall. Ahead of Conor Bedard, actually, the uh, generational player. But because of uh, events occurred in Russia and the Russian factor, uh, of course, of COVID and now the war in Ukraine, WIHF, the International Hockey Federation, has banned Soviet national teams from playing any national tournaments. So there had been a lot of eyes on him especially when it comes to him going against the top three, you know, Conor Bedard, Adam Vitilli, Leo Carlson. He hadn't really got a chance to play against them, so we really don't know exactly how he's developed in the last few years. But before that, he was a really high-end prospect. Right now, they got him ranked second in international rankings, central scouting. He's... uh. Got, he played 30 games. He's got nine goals, 11 assists for 20 points. But the other factor is he's got a KHL contract, Continental Hockey League contract. It goes until the 26-27 season. So in other words, the team that drafted him won't be able to see him play in their, you know, in their sweater until the 27-28 season. That's why I feel he's dropped down so far. I think this Arizona would be the ideal spot for him because Arizona – is in transition right now anyways. So they could let him deal out for a while in Russia. And it would be unbelievable if they could get a technically a first overall pick in the actual sixth spot. Because he is actually a a lethal scorer. He's got a pure NHL scorer. He's he's got potential to be a superstar top line uh, center Iceman. He's got great uh puck landing skills. He always finds the back of the net, no matter where he's at in the offensive zone. He's 5'10", 160 pounds. He's, uh, he could be a, one heck of a, uh, a top uh, winger for your NHL team. But at the same time, he could be a, just as big of a bust as any uh, team that uh, drafts him. They just don't know because of the Russian factor that you have to deal with with this pick. That's why I'd had him drop down. He should have been the fourth pick. But I had him drop down the six pick because of that Russian factor. I didn't think San Jose and Montreal was going to take a chance on him. I wouldn't have taken a chance on him because those two teams, GMs. But I think Arizona is the ideal team for him to go to because they could take a chance on him. Now let's look at the uh, seventh pick. That's going to be the Philadelphia Flyers, a team that's just now starting to do a rebuild. Also a team that doesn't have anybody under the age of 21 on the roster last year. So let's look at prospects first. 
Cutter Gutier. He's a 6'2", 190-pound, versatile, talented power forward. He has a potential being a, uh, a potential uh, blue chipper, too. He was drafted in uh, 2022, fifth overall. Let's look at the next one they got. Next one's going to be Bobby Brink. He was drafted by Philadelphia in 2019, second round, 34th overall. Actually, it was a trade through uh, Nashville to, to actually get that pick, to actually pick him up. He's a 5'8", 160-pound uh, right winger. He's a real sharp shooting winger. The other Philadelphia Flyer prospect I'm going to look at is Tyson Forrester. He's a right winger, 6'2", 195 pounds. He was drafted in 2020, first round, 23rd overall. He's a talented scoring forward. This is a situation where you really would like to have a blue chip defenseman at the seventh spot. Because I think Philadelphia really could use one right now. But unfortunately, there's none I feel that are worth picking that high. Uh, so I'm going to go with Ryan Leonard. He's a center slash left winger. Plays for the U.S. under-18 national team. He's 5'11", 190 pounds. Central Scouting's guy ranked fifth overall. He played 49 games, 42 goals, 34 assists for 79 points. He's a typical uh, quick, versatile forward. He has really solid foot speed. He has a really good heavy shot. And can also score from anywhere on the ice. He's a, he's a safe pick if he just was a little bit bigger. He would definitely have a higher potential to be a top six forward. I mean, he, he scored 59 goals this season in the uh, under-18 uh, development program in Michigan. Let's let now look at the uh, eighth pick. Who's got the eighth pick? The eighth pick goes to the Washington Capitals, a team that this is the first time in a long time that they picked this high in the draft. They've been uh, going for so many years that uh, – they normally don't have too many uh, first-round draft picks. Now, right now, under 21. They didn't have anybody under 21 actually playing in the NHL last year. But let's look at the uh, prospects. They got a couple guys' prospects that are pretty interesting. The first person I'm going to look at is Ivan Brestachinko. Now, he was drafted in 2022 in the first round, 20th overall. He's a dynamic offensive winger with an NHL shot. But he also had the Russian factor kicked in. Last year, he was supposed to be a top five pick. But he slipped all the way down to 20 because of the Russian factor. Lack of exposure because uh, WIHF, the International Hockey Federation, banned Russian national teams from playing in any international tournaments. You didn't get a chance to see him last year against the uh, top team or top players in like the world under 20 world championships. But he actually, if you look at this KHL, Continental Hockey League uh, stats, and uh, he played 16 games last year in the KHL. He got 10 goals, 7 assists for 17 points. That's a over, that's a point a game. The only drawback is he's under a KHL contract until 2026 27 is the first time the Capitals will actually be able to see him in a Capitol sweater. Which he basically, what they tried to do is they tried to actually get him to replace Ovi. So when Ovi actually retires, they wanted somebody that could do the exact same thing Ovi did. And it looks like they possibly could have it. But it's going to be a while before they actually really can uh, prove that theory. The other prospect I'm going to look at is Henderson Lapierre. He's a uh, six foot, 180 pound center iceman. He was drafted in 2020. In the first round, 22nd overall, he's a little bit of a small but a very smart playmaking center iceman. They really don't have a whole lot of high-end talent in Washington because, like I said, they've gone for it for so many years. But let's now look at the draft pick. I think they're going to uh, best suit them. So the eighth pick, I suggest they pick Zach Benson. He's a winger. He can play right or left. He plays for the Winnipeg Ice of the Western Hockey League. He's a uh, essential scouting. He's North America. He's ranked sixth. He played 60 games. He got 36 goals. He got 62 assists for a total of 
98 points. He's a speedy, lightweight forward with excellent, accurate shot. He also has a high ability of skating. Oh, by the way, he was second highest scoring draft eligible player in this year's draft, just behind Connor Bernard. Okay, let's do, see who's got the uh, ninth pick in this uh, draft. And that goes to the Detroit Red Wings, which Iserman is the general manager of Detroit, has done an unbelievable great job of rebuilding this team. I mean, the top six forwards for the future look unbelievably great. Top four defensemen, unbelievably great. And then they got potential number one goaltender in the system. So, I mean, this team really doesn't need a whole heck of a lot. So this basically is just going to be filling holes type of situation for them. The under 21, they have two guys, and both those guys are studs. First, I'm going to look at Moritz Sider. He's a defenseman. He played 82 games. He got five goals, 37-6, 42 points. But this guy is a, a, a complete top-pairing defenseman. He can skate. He can hit. He can play offense. He can play defense. This is a top pairing defenseman right there. And then the other one I'm going to look at is Lucas Raymond. He's a left winger. He played 74 games. He had 17 goals, 20 assists for 45 points. He's an unbelievably skilled winger for him. These are the two guys they got under 21 that played last year's, or last year's team. Two guys under 21 that played in last year's team. They got two studs under 21 that played in last year's team. And then they got more coming. The prospects. Let's look at the first prospect they got. I'm going to focus on first on Simon Edmondson. He's a defenseman. He's 6'4", 200 pounds. I mean, he's a franchise defenseman with top-level skills. That Detroit drafted him in 2021 in the first round, six overall. Now I'm going to talk about their potential goaltender of the future, Sebastian Kosa. He was drafted in uh, 2021 in the first round, 15th overall. He's a talented uh, goaltender, a potential starter. But this is what I'm talking about. He was drafted out of the Western Hockey League, Edmonton Oil Kings. He actually, Detroit actually traded up to get a hold of him. And right now he's playing the East Coast Hockey League with Toledo, Walleye. Uh, that's his double A. So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to goaltenders in the first round. They are chancy. You never know how well they're going to develop and how long they're going to develop. So, you know, taking a goaltender in the first round is a risky proposition. But, you know, at times they work out. And then other times they crash and burn. So now let's look at the draft pick Detroit's going to have in the ninth, ninth pick overall. Now, Eisman has been brilliant when it comes to drafting this team or actually developing this team. Like I said... They're all around, except for one thing that I noticed. The middle six isn't uh, up to Stanley Cup standards. Remember back in the 90s when Eisman was playing under Scotty Bowman, they had the grind line. Draper, Melby, Darren McCarthy. That really actually made the Detroit Red Wings a really, really tough team to play against. And then when he got to Tampa Bay, he kind of redid it again to give them a multiple cups with uh, depth of like Yanni Gord and Goudreau. And also remember the grind line depth forwards that uh, propelled their defense and really shut down the other teams, similar to what they did in Tampa. Uh, Darren McCarthy actually had probably one of the high, most highlighted uh, Detroit Red Wings goals. He scored a cup-winning goal against the Philadelphia Flyers in game four, like I said, to win a cup against a, a very good Ron Hextall at the time. And see, that's what Detroit doesn't have right now. They don't have those unbelievable middle six depth forwards. And that's why I think they're going to be drafting Dalibor Daborski. He's a Slovak forward. He's an all-around versatile forward with good offensive and defensive skills. He has a really good one-timer, really accurate, but he's a really good solid back checker and plays really good defense. So I think, you know, this would be ideal 
for them to actually start building around players like this to get their middle six taken care of. Oh, by the way, he's Central Scouting International. He's ranked third. Last year's European stats are he played 36 games. He had six goals, eight assists for 14 points. Oh, he's 6'1 and 190 pounds. I think it'd be ideal for them to start building up their middle six because they got everything else taken care of in Detroit. Heiserman needs to start working on that middle six, and this guy would really help them develop that middle six. Okay, let's look at the 10th pick. That goes to the St. Louis Blues. They have one guy under the age of 21 that played on the roster last year, and that's Jake Neighbors. He's a left wing. He played 43 games. He got six goals, four assists for 10 points. And now let's look at the uh, prospects for the St. Louis Blues. Next person is one of those uh, high-flying forwards from the University of Minnesota, Jimmy Snuggaroo. He's a left winger. He's 6'1", 195 pounds. St. Louis drafted him in 2022, first round, 23 overall. He's a talented, versatile, high-scoring winger. He was over a uh, point a game for the University of Minnesota last year. The next one I look at is Zach Bodazuk. He's a six foot, 185 pound, another talented scoring forward. St. Louis drafted him in 2021 in the first round, 17th overall. Now let's look at the uh, high prospect defense they have. He's a highly skilled offensive defenseman, a little small. Scott Prunovich. He's a uh, St. Louis Blues draft pick. They drafted him in 2018 in the second round, 45th overall. Like I said, he's a very small but talented offensive defenseman. Now let's look and see who I think St. Louis should draft in their pick. I think they should go for Oliver Moore. He's a center iceman. He's played in the U.S. under-18 national program in Michigan. He's 5'11 and 190 pounds. In Central Scouting, North America has him ranked 8th. Last year, games played was 53, goals was 26, assists was 30, total points 64. Now, he played on the second line last year for the under-18 under national team. But he is a crafty two-way center iceman with a great first step and high-end energy and puck handling skills. So this is where the draft starts to get a little dicey, a little hard to figure out because the talent really drops at the 10th pick and beyond. So let's look at the uh, the 11th pick. That would be the Vancouver Canucks. They have one player that was under the age of 21 that played for their uh, roster. Basilia Kovovic. He's another Russian. He was drafted in the uh, 10th overall in 2019 draft. Another one of those had the Russian factor involved. They didn't know what, exactly what they were going to get. But I thought he should be drafted a little bit higher than that. Uh, he had right now for Vancouver, he uh, played 39 games. He had four goals, three assists for seven points, which wasn't very good. I thought he'd be a lot better than that. But he's still developing. He's still got a chance of being a a solid top six forward for him. Now let's look at their prospects. First one I look at is Atu Ratu. He's a center. He's 6'2", 190 pounds. Vancouver acquired him in a trade from the New York Islanders on January 30th, 2023. He was originally drafted by the New York Islanders in the second round in the, in the 2021st draft. He's a talented all-around center iceman. So now I'm going to look at the person I think they should pick, and that's Simel Honzak. He's a Slovakian import that played in the... Uh, Western Hockey League for Vancouver Giants. And I think it'd be a nice hometown uh, pick there. In Central Scouting, North America, he was ranked ninth, which I don't understand why he was in the North American Scouting Report. I think he should have been the European, but that's my opinion there. Uh, games played, 43. Goals, 23. Assists, 33. And total points, 56. He's a high energy, very competitive big forward. Uh, he's not going to be a really, he's going to be a long shot to be a top six, but he's also a middle six type of guy that can play 
a 200 foot game. The next pick is the, now it should be the Ottawa Senators having the 12th pick. But since they had a trade, the pick goes to the Arizona Coyotes, which I've already gone through all their prospects. So I'm not going to talk about that all again. I'll just go right to the pick, the Arizona's pick or the 12th pick. I think Arizona should take Matthew Wood, a left winger from the University of Connecticut in the NCAA. He's a 6'3", 185-pound uh, forward. Central Scouting, North America, they rank him fourth, which I think is a little high, actually. He had uh, games played as 35, goals was 11, assists was 23, for a total of 34 points. He has a quick wrist shot, and he can drive right to the net with not a problem because he's big and strong. But he's not really a big hitter. I mean, I, he doesn't hit as much as I like him to hit along the boards. That's the only thing that really concerns me about him. But he'd be a solid uh, 12th pick, I think, for the uh, Arizona Coyotes. The 13th pick goes to the Buffalo Sabres, and Kevin Adams has done a really solid job of uh, developing and drafting players for the Sabre team. The first person under 21 that I like to focus on is Jack Quinn, left wing. He played 75 games in the NHL. He has 14 goals, 23 assists for 37 points. The next person I like to focus on was the 2021 first overall pick, Owen Power. Defense, he played 79 games, had four goals, 31 assists for 35 points. He still played solid. He's got a little bit more uh, development to do, but he's turned into a top-level franchise defenseman. Now let's look at the prospects we have for the uh, Sabre team. I'm looking at Matthew Savoy. Now I'm really impressed with this guy when he was being drafted. He's a 5'10", 180-pound center iceman, top-level franchise center iceman potential, I thought, when he was being drafted. And he still could be a legitimate top six uh, forward in the NHL. Drafted by Buffalo in 2022 in the first round, ninth overall. Let's look at the next one. Erie Coolidge, he's another center iceman. He's 5'10", 170 pounds. He's a solid, a little smallish, all-around uh, forward. Buffalo drafted him in a 2022 in the first round, 28th overall. And they also have one more center iceman that I'm going to focus on. He's a highly skilled Swedish, Nola Olsen. He's a center, 5'10", 160 pound. Buffalo drafted him in 2022 in the first round, 16th overall. He's a skilled two-way center iceman. Now let's look what Buffalo should pick in this uh, draft. I think the first defenseman should be picked uh, at this spot with Buffalo. Buffalo's got enough forwards. They need some more help on the blue line. I think David Reinbacher, he's a right-handed defenseman from Austria. He right now is in the uh, Central Scouting European, or international, I should say. He's ranked number five. Games played, 46, goals three, assists 19, points 32. He played at the top level in the Switzerland Elite League. He's a very calm, two-way game defenseman. He plays an all-around 200-foot game. Now let's look at the uh, next pick. Now the next pick goes to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They have nobody under the age of 21 played on the roster last year. And all their prospects pool has been diminished for such a long time since they've been going after cup run after cup run after cup run for the last, what, 20 years with uh, Crosby and Malkin. So really they don't have a lot. They haven't really don't have anything I can really talk about. Uh, so I'll just go right, right to their draft pick. This is what I think Pittsburgh should do with their uh, 14th pick. I think they should draft Gabe Perot. He's a right winger. He plays the USA under-18 national program in Michigan. He's 5'10", 165 pounds. If he's just a little bit bigger, he'd be a lot uh, higher up draft pick. Uh, in Central Scouting North America, he's ranked 10th. He played 55 games in the U.S. national team. He got 46 goals. He got 64 assists for 110 points. He's a legitimate uh, scoring forward. He's just a little light. If he was just a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier, he would have been higher up in the draft. But they really do need prospects, and he really gives them 
high-end prospect to work around. So let's go down and go to the 15 pick, which is owned by the Nashville Predators, which be David Poyle's last draft as general manager. He's been the only general manager Nashville's had since their existence in 1999. And coincidental, his last draft will be in Nashville. So let's look and see what Nashville's got. Now they have nobody that was under age 21 that played on that team last year. So let's look at the uh, prospects they have. The first one is Joaquin Kimball. He's a 5'11", 180 pound right winger. The Nashville drafted in the 17th pick in the 2020 draft. He's a quality all around winger. And I have to admit, he really caught my eye in that year's uh, under 20 tournament. He played for Finland. And he actually played on the highest level Finnish Elite League at the time. The other Predator prospect I'm going to look at, Yuroslav Alaskov. He's a big Russian goaltender. He's like 6'3", 290, plays for Milwaukee in the AHL, the AAA uh, affiliate of the Nashville Predators. He's a talented goaltender. They drafted him in the uh, first round, 11th overall in 2020 draft. And he's another example of making a risky move by taking a goaltender in the first round. It's taking him a little long to develop. Now we'll get to the point where I tell you who Nashville should pick. I think I get Andrew Crystal. He's a left winger. He's 5'9", 160 pounds. He's a little small guy. Central Scouting North America is ranking 15th. He played uh, 54 games, got 39 points, 65 assists for 95 points total. In the WHA, the Western Hockey League, he does a really good job with his size of protecting the puck, and he's a little ball of energy. He's got speed and energy. It's unbelievable. He's a potential second-line uh, winger, but he's another one of those players that, if he was just a little bigger, a little stronger, would have been moved a lot higher in the draft. Now we're going to go with the last pick I'm going to preview, the 16th pick. I, I'm basically previewing all the draft lottery picks. After that, I'm not going to go any further. So the last pick I'm going to preview is the Calgary Flames 16th pick. Now, Calgary didn't have anybody under age of 21 played in last year's roster on last year's team. But let's look at the prospects they have. First one I want to look at is Dustin Wolf. Now, he did a one heck of a job in Calgary's uh, triple affiliate in Calgary. Uh, he was a... Uh, 2009 draft. He was the seventh round, 214th pick overall. He's a solid. He, he could potentially be a a starting goaltender for the Flames in the future. Now I'm going to look at uh, Matthew Coronado. He's a 5'10", 180 pound uh, forward. Uh, Flames draft him in 2021 in the first round, 13th overall pick. He's a versatile scoring forward for him. And now one more player I like to focus on from the Flames is Jacob Peltier. He was drafted by the Flames in 2019 in the first round, 26 overall. He's a talented, versatile, two-way forward. Now let's look at the Flames uh, draft pick, who I think the Flames should draft. Now I kept going to this guy, Braden Yeager. He plays for uh, West Hockey League Moose Jaw Warriors. He's six foot, 160 pounds. Central Scouts got him ranked 11th, and I kept looking at him, looking at him, okay, I want him, think I could put him here. I think I could put him here. But every time I did that, I kept going back to the same problems. Oh, by the way, for Moose Jaw, he scored, he actually played in 67 games. He scored 26 goals. He scored 56 for a total of 67 points. He's got a really great potential for being a really good offensive guy, and he's got solid defensive skills. But the problem with him is is they don't know if he can drive the play at the next level. They don't know if he can actually handle the next level with the intensity and the dedication you have with that next level, the NHL. Some of the scouts really worry about that. And I could see it because I was watching him play in the uh, major juniors. I watched him play in the uh, CHA prospect game. You could tell he kind of takes shifts off on occasion. But, you know, he's definitely worth a top 16 pick. So that's uh, that's my draft preview. I just ran down the uh, top.
top 16 picks, my opinion, who each team in the top 16 picks should pick. I gave you an uh, overview of the uh, top three prospects and uh, give you a little idea what I think of the uh, under-21 players that are actually playing for these teams last year. Well, this is a podcast, everything about hockey. If you don't like hockey, you won't like this podcast. Thanks for listening.